And welcome to my playhouse and thank you very much for dropping in. Uh, today we're gonna be updating a couple of Lenovo servers over here. I got these from Jesper, Jesper, and I picked them up in Copenhagen video way back. I have actually not had power on these servers yet, so uh, today we better do that. I kind of managed them to get them out of the living room because they were they were taking up quite a bit of space in there. So I thought that today we would go and we would firmware update it. And I have a USB key here with a firmware update for it. The, um, what do they call it? They call it the Lenovo X Clarity Sense. Ah, I forget. But it's Lenovo's update solution for uh, just having all the updates for all the server components in um, in one update. It uh, runs on a Linux kernel that boots and it checks what's in the server and it just pushes out new firmware to all the devices. If you have a network card and it's on the Lenovo slash IBM list of things that they um, that they have sold me, well, then it will be updated. Well, I have the choice of updating it. I can say, no, I actually don't want that, but um, it will offer to update it at least. Rate controller, network cards, a lot of good stuff inside the server. So. Uh, Let's uh, plug this in and try and put some power on. I have actually put power on it. You will see it blinking. There. I'm gonna do all three of them, I hope, if time permits it. But I have another little project that I will be doing in the meanwhile because this takes quite a bit. It's not the faster thing in the universe. It, it can easily take a couple of hours, especially with an old server like this. I have no idea if it has ever been updated since it was um, pulled out of the box. It's Turn it on. I can. I can turn it on in view. Awesome. Uh, maybe. There. On. USB. So when a Lenovo server has been off like this, power pull and everything, it's very slow at booting because it it checks a lot of stuff if everything works. Uh, I know that on the HP servers, it actually boot three times. If the server was not shut down in the right way, well it would actually boot three times to check if everything is okay and okay again and okay again. Uh, I don't believe that Lenovo does this but it takes still takes a while to boot it up the first time. We want to go into the uh, boot order. I don't believe that is. Oh what is that? F12? F8? Uh, I think it's F12. There is nothing else in the server that they can boot on so should pop up at some point. Yeah, F12 to select the boot device. Uh, and it's just a USB storage. I believe that's that's the one, right? Yeah, let's do that. Let's see if it sees my USB stick. Yep, it does. So it will be booting, here it's called Tool Sender. That, that's IBM's name for it. This is I believe still in the process of switching from being an IBM developed product over to being a Lenovo developed project. Um, Lenovo has had their website up and running for this for quite a bit. So, and I really forget if this is the IBM or the Lenovo one that I have on here. So, but. As you can see, it boots a lot of Linux stuff and it finds a lot of stuff in the, in the server and to figure out what do we have. So I will let this run and we'll get back to it when it, um, when it wants something. Okay, here we are. Welcome to Lenovo X Clarity Essential. Essential. I, thought, I remember that. I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself on that one. So let's see if... Oh, the mouse works. Awesome. So, I have my boot media here and I can pick this update and uh, that's, that's about what I can pick right here, so uh, we'll do that. And we can see what I put on this USB, I have updates for the 3550 Model 3, 3650 Model 3, 3550 Model 2 and the 3650 Model 2. So kind of the, the top two models are very much alike and the bottom two models are very much alike, more or less if the server is one or two use. So that's awesome. So let's uh, click start to update. We're gonna go there. Go, go, gadget. 
and it's gonna check everything, see if what it is that we have in this machine, and it's gonna come out with the recommendations on what we have to uh, do and stuff. So, in the meanwhile, I want to show you the other project that I'm working on. Down here, I have a box full of patch cables, and over here, I have another box full of patch cables. And the general idea was that one of these boxes would be the long cables, and the other one would be the short cables. And let's just admit that that has never worked out. So now I went out and got some more boxes and I'm gonna write uh, the length on these boxes and just put cables in that is one meter in that box, three meters in that box and this one is um, is the next one to go I guess. Um, I used too much time messing around in these boxes trying to find a cable that will fit and then when that doesn't happen well, you do the next best thing and take a cable that is uh, maybe just one meter too long and it becomes a hell of a mess in the back of your server. So, uh, yeah, I'm working on that, but now I can see that uh, we are ready to look at this. We can see what it found. It's going to continue in 30 seconds, so I have to be a little bit quick. Uh, it's going to update the, the EFI. Uh, that's not much of an update, it's just a little one. There is also something for the for the rig controller. Let's go further down, see what else it has. Oh, that's the rig controller, sorry. What was the top one then? Oh, I think we get a summary now, so might actually be easier to just see that one. Do I really need to press begin? That's just stupid. Okay, running update. We get a summary here. It's uh, updating UEFI. It's updating the dynamic system analyzing, the DSA, that's the internal built-in test program for testing different stuff. Then it's updating the rate controller and the integrated management module, the IMM. So it, that's not bad at all, there could have been a lot more updates. So this server was not that far behind in updates. So while the server is updating, I have time to mess around with my cables here. And I know that these shelves behind me are exactly one meter apart. I actually made a little mark here, so I can kind of just measure out the cables here. Um, because some of them are three meters, but I do also have two and a half meter cables, and uh, this one was three meter. And that's, um, well, you want them right. Sometimes you just, half a meter can mean the difference between it being a mess and it being okay. I think that everybody has their own way of, of handling their cables. So uh, I'm not gonna judge and say that this is the perfect way. I'm just showing you that that's the way I do it. I'm sure that I'm gonna get all your good suggestions about how I should be doing it. I always do. <laughs> so. I'm also guessing three meters on this one, so. Yeah. Working hard on uh, cleaning the data center. I uh, have three boxes is not enough, so I need some boxes for longer and shorter cables as well. So I'm gonna make a couple of more boxes here. I'm just putting on this tape so that if I, uh, for some reason, want to do something else, well, I can just exchange the tape and I don't have to mess around with it. Well, normally you would just write it directly on the box so i have some that is uh, one and a half meters uh, and i do believe they'll have quite a few or i might have some of those that it's actually a really good length for going around the back of, of my data center in here so and i call them patch okay this is uh, <clears throat> not the best and we need another one uh, for five meter cables Go get some other links as well, but well, I only have one box left when we're done with these two. So we'll make these and we'll see what uh, what I have most of. Maybe it's just one 10 meter plus thing I need. So I have kind of made these cables here and they are meant for going into each server. Like uh, 
I have marked them one of them with the red one and that's for the management interface um, so that I knew that all the one with with red I could pull them out without losing anything uh, the one with the white uh, I sh or without anything I shouldn't really pull them up and then it's just this is one of the one and a half meter and then in the in the server they would go into the right ports this one would be for the switch and the switch had it had like this configuration oh now it's face recognizing me so that it would uh, go well actually this way I had the management port in the bottom of the switch and I had the regular data cable at top so it would just pop in and occupy two ports on top of each other we're kind of okay so uh, I'm just gonna keep this as it is and put it in the box what the hell you know so I thought we had a deal that I could go do other thing uh, the rate controller um, did not success so uh, uh. Okay, hmm. we'll probably have to try that again then. But we'll let it run with the IMM, and that's really the one that takes the longest. So I'll probably be done with all my cables before that one is completed. In the box, I found a cable where this tab of the patch cable is missing, and this is nothing but trouble. And uh, well, I used to save these cables because, well, I could fix them. I could remove the plug and I could make a new one. Nowadays, I just throw them out. It's, I'm, I'm not wasting time on fixing those. And um, I am planning on just having the boxes like this. This is two meters. There will be two meter cables. And then there will also be two meter fiber optic pads cables. Um, and if I get some duct cables, they might as well go in here as well. I um, haven't actually ordered those yet. If anyone has some duct cables that they don't use, do, uh, do tell. <laughs> Still running. Okay, it says that uh, this is successful, but uh, there is a button for next down here. And that's uh, grayed out. I am wondering if it's pressable. Probably not. Okay, I'll give it another few minutes and see if it uh, wakes up or anything. Yeah, the server might have done weird stuff. It has both been upgrading the Wi-Fi and the IMM, so sometimes they do weird stuff. So I might have to reboot it, um, but I'll give it a few minutes. I think I have to take that back. Uh, it did not come up by itself, but I booted it. I uh, had to press the button, and right now the server has been well, rebooting a couple of times, so it is probably testing if everything is okay and why it suddenly lost power without it knowing why. So maybe the same as HP servers. Funny thing that I haven't realized that before. I am booting the USB key again to see if I can get the rate controller to also uh, update. Um, I'm hoping. I don't know. Okay that didn't work out for me it still doesn't work with the rate controller it, it does give me a error up here message error UXSPI does not run successfully to trace error blah 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 okay I'm not gonna bother I'm gonna go on with the next server up here and then I might make a new USB key and see if I have any more luck there might be new updates on a new USB key as well but I thought that I would just run all three servers through with this USB key to, uh, to get those updates. Okay, the next server completed with the same error. So apparently my little USB thingy here has a bad driver or something for the rate controller. Or it was just a bad release or I don't know. But never mind, I'm just gonna do the last server and right now I'm, I'm picking through my old used fiber optic cables um, just trying to sort them out with the different lengths I have no idea if they're any good anymore but well might have a look at that in another video um, see if I can get a connection between them I don't seem to have any that is very short seems right now it seems that the shortest fiber optic cable I have is three meters so I'll uh, do the last server and uh, hopefully 
I'll be done with the cables at the same time. Okay, so this last one wanna be difficult and brag about its uh, previous disconfiguration. So uh, I think we'll uh, we'll have to go and delete those. Uh, so where did the mouse go? So I'm just gonna go in here and delete whatever it thinks it. Nothing. Okay. So maybe I just have to uh, go out again and it will have forgotten about that configuration. And continuing with my cables. Okay, last server has completed and failed on the RAID controller <laughs> again. So, well, at least we have three servers that are identical. <laughs> so, well, um, in the meanwhile, I made one hell of a mess in here. So, uh, I'll show you that. So, I have cables here everywhere. I have started cleaning up three meters, one meters, two meters, way too many two meters, uh, five meters, and not as many one and a half meters as I would have liked to. And in here, I was, I was trying to stack it up. I wanted the boxes to go in there. I have some, some boxes with some. Well, some random stuff. Actually, I found something that I needed to put in there. What was that? Was those plugs? These plugs, network plugs, goes in that box there. And I found my very first, oops, UPS here. Um, was my very first server oops that I ever got, and I was using that on my at the prison. That was a novel netware server and I had this uh, under my desk somewhere. Uh, I had since taken the batteries out of it. This is quite a heavy one because it, it has a real what do transformer in there. Uh, that's the back of it. Uh, 900 watt what am? So oh, there 630 watts for this model 900. It's really weird to only get 630 watts out of something that you should think would be 900 watts. So, eh. So, but um, it has been sitting in here for quite a while. So, uh, yeah, um, I don't think I need it anymore. But, oh, do I? I think I could place it over here on top of these two IBM UPSs. So, um, I might just be, sh might just be moving it a little bit. And uh, then I want the network cables to live here, easy accessible. Okay, so this is what my cleaning effort looks like down here. I, uh, I stuffed my old loops in here. And the boxes with the network cables are here. And they're kind of accessible this way. This one has wheels on it, so that's all good. And I'm preparing for the next video that I'm gonna present to you in a couple of days. Uh, all of this is 10G network cards, but um, well, we have to end this one first. Updating three servers with some of the firmware, I have to look into why the RAID controller wasn't working. But in the next video, I'm gonna be putting in 10 gigabit Ethernet cards in those servers anyway, so um, they might need upgrading as well. So, so I'll just make a new bootable USB stick and then I can upgrade the rest of it. But it's nice to know that the BIOS and the IMM and stuff is pretty much up to date. There might be a new update for it. But I have a special message for the Patreon supporters. Please remember to go watch the films that I put over there. There's a lot of small videos for you over there. I can see I have like 150 some patrons. But well, you don't watch all the videos. You really should. So go check it out. Um, Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye bye.